Have you guys ever noticed that English footballers are so damn expensive? It's out of this world. We'll take a look. We're in the transfer window, so we've got some transfer business to look at. And uh, then we've got highlights with Liverpool and an FA Cup match with Leeds. I did change my mind because the Leeds match came up. So we'll get into all that after the intro. Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. Football Manager 21, and this is Club 3, Episode 13 in our Journeyman Save. We are currently in the Premier League for the first year with Leicester after they have been a mostly championship side for quite some time. And uh, yeah, just a reminder, if you're relatively new, uh, my unique spin on Football Manager is I do a Football Manager plus 30. And what that is, is I, I advance 30 years in the future before I start my saves. That way, basically, everybody in the game is a, re, is a new gen. All the players are gone. So let's start looking at, well, we're gonna, I'm going to play this match against Liverpool League match. We'll come back. We'll catch up on other league matches. We'll check out the highlights. Uh, we'll go through the transfers, and then we'll get into the Leeds match. So uh, let me get this played, and uh, I'll be right back for you. Le Liverpool, of course, heavily favored in this one, but we've been doing well. So Nagami finds Mikatan on the right wing into Graves, and Graves has been deadly for us again this season. And put us up 1-0. Liverpool turns it around. And beats Gibbon from the left side of the box. Good finish to the back post. Gibbon maybe should have done a little bit better, but you know, sometimes you just can't put that on the goalkeeper. That's a square in. It gets headed through a crowd of three to Ramadani at the back post. And now we're in a 2 1 hole, 58th minute. We're back on the attack. Henson's into the box, slides it past the keeper at the near post. That's the equalizer at 2-1. to one. And then in the 74th minute, Chasson up the left, into the box. It's tackled away from him, but it goes right into the path of Romain, and he puts it into the net to put us up 3-2. And then just a few minutes later, a corner leads to a header, and I believe that was Kowalski. Yes, it was. Kowalski puts in one, and we win this one 4-2. to two. Very, very good game. Romain, man of the match. So we're going to praise him. Taking a look at our schedule since last game, the loss to Chelsea. We had a 1-1 draw with Crystal Palace in front of a sellout crowd. Romain with the goal there. A 3-3 draw with Brentford. Uh, we did have to play a rotated squad here. A lot of reserves, uh, including our reserve keeper, El Batabi, just to give him a game. Uh, so that led to that. Brentford, we, went, we were pretty much with our starting group, but it was only a couple of days later. We did manage a 3-3 draw. Romain, Mikatan, and Graves with the goals. We were up 3-0, and uh, they scored one in stoppage time in the first half, got a second goal, or, you know, about midway through the second half, and then a penalty for the Vinicius hat trick in late in the game. I was pretty disappointed that we let that one slip away. Uh, we then beat Fleetwood 7 0 in the FA Cup third round. Romain with four goals in this one. I don't even know what you would call that. Graves with a goal, Cernan and Stigen Henson's. Found the net as well. 4-1 win over Stoke. Graves with a brace. Kowalski with a goal. And Cernan with icing on the cake for us. A 3-3 draw with Man City, which was really good, being that they're top of the league. Uh, we even got an own goal out of that in the 52nd minute. Again, we led 3-0 and just got beat. Uh, not going defensive enough, not, not collapsing back enough, whatever the case may be. 
But uh, they got two goals in two minutes from Frestas, and Bagic got a goal just a few minutes later uh, for the equalizer. And uh, then, of course, Liverpool with the 4-2 to two win. So a lot of draws, but, you know, that's actually not a horrible thing for a newly promoted championship side. Uh, so taking a look at the competition, we are currently in ninth. We have clawed our way up to ninth, 31 points from 22 so we're now, what, nine points above one for one. Uh, the Kev ratio, as Lelujo calls it. And uh, only six points behind Rotherham for some qualification for Europe. Not sure we're ready for that, though. We just want to stay up this year, honestly. But we would like a uh, top half finish because that's going to lead to a lot of money. And then, of course, we were only about six or seven points clear of relegation last time we looked. Now we have extended that to 11 points. So things are starting to settle in, starting to look good. Taking a look at the transfer windows going back into December. Uh, Pablo Maney, he's young. He's a five-star uh, prospect uh, potential, but... He, he's not good enough to play now, and he's really starting to whinge. Uh, he, I think at five-star potential with his ratings, he should be, I mean, he's valued at eight and a quarter, and I was getting offers for three or four million. I said, there's no way I'm letting him go, and he threw a fit. And um, so I finally just put him out on loan, uh, he wasn't going to be around the team. Uh, Matthew Henry, uh, one of our midfielders, uh, we do move him on for 625000 to Luton. And we got rid of one of our three team leaders in Jake Rush. Now, Jake had played quite a bit, but being that we've converted over to this three-back set, Rush, historically for us, has been more of a left-back and I thought I could do better at center back. But I didn't have anybody really as good as him available. Gerver got hurt, so he was kind of being forced to play anyway. But I said, you know, half a million dollars a month. We can free that up, sign somebody else that's probably better. So we sold him for $38 million. Maybe I could have gotten a little more. But Gangzhou, uh, Gangzhou uh, signs him in China. Uh, he was not happy when I transfer listed him. Uh, but then the offer came in. I took it and I told him, get over it. And uh, probably an unbeelsa like thing to do, especially for somebody that uh, has been one of your team leaders. Um, and honestly, since I haven't recorded in a week, I kind of left my Bielsa hat off, even though I'm wearing my Leeds hat. But uh, I kind of forgot. The, the the guidelines of the save here and uh i went yeah i'm gonna take 38 million um but i think bielsa would probably do the same thing if he got a really good offer and he knew he could replace that player and not be any worse off financially he'd probably do it uh we've actually seen him players that have come to him and said um, i just don't want to be here anymore he has literally benched them and not played them anymore, even if they were starters in the starting 11 up until that point. Uh, he did it with Samu Saiz a couple of years ago. And uh, I was like, damn, because uh, I actually liked him. Uh, we have brought in two players. We paid $8 million for Massimiliano Pascarello from Cretone. Uh, he is valued at $29.5 million. 28-year-old Italian, uh, been playing in Serie A, but uh, only two reserve appearances this year. Uh, he was in the last year of his contract, and three-and-a-half star. Uh, he's maxed out, but he's in his prime. He's in that 400000 but that's kind of the norm for really good players. He can play all the way up that right side, right back, midfield, attacking mid, if we go to back to that tactic. And he is pretty damn good. Uh, already two starts, one assist, playing a 7.05, 79% passing. Like to see that get a little bit better. But for two matches in, I think he's doing a bang up job. 
And then we also brought in Luke Rowe from Bristol City for $5 million. He is a striker, 5'11", value now at $27.5 million. Bristol City bought him for $59 million. He's actually been a goal scorer, just, you know, one in three, one in four, uh, while he's been tooling around. But he hadn't played badly, six nines, six eights. So hoping he can do something for us. He's actually had uh, two league starts, a uh, one assist and a six seven five. Where I see him slotting in is probably in that number ten role. Is taking that, and then that frees up Romain to go back to midfield or the left wing, wherever we really need him at. And then we also have a deal out for Aaron Fowler. Now, I mentioned that English guys are evidently very expensive, and historically they are in the game, probably in real life too, um, especially with the limitations. I mean, we're only allowed, I think it's 17 foreign players, and I've already got 12. So there were two or three guys that I looked at that would have been a hell of a lot cheaper well, not a hell of a lot. They would have been in that, you know, in that range. But, you know, I could have probably got him for like 16 or 17 million. But I saw him and I went, you know, he's actually really good. He's tall. He's got pace. He's got heading. Really good at tackling. He can play. Um, passing's not great, but he can fit in. So I went ahead and popped on him because we had made the rush deal. I had the money to spend. So we have offered him. He's, they've accepted the offer. We have a contract out. Look at that. 850000 a month. I could have paid, like I said, 17 to $20 million and probably only had 4 or $5 million in salary. You know? You know, four, well, 400 to 500000 in salary, not million. Um, so, yeah, he's going to cost me an arm and a leg. I'm assuming he's going to sign. He's accepted the deal, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but maybe he'll make his debut in the next match. So, again, good win over Liverpool. We're on a good run of form. We're scoring goals with this new tactic that came in uh, during the West Brom match. So, uh, you can see we're scoring goals for fun basically uh but still we're conceding a fair bit as a you know newly promoted side and i was going to come back for leeds but you know arsenal is sitting there i guess i could do arsenal and come back for leeds but you know what let's go ahead and play arsenal let me get to it and we'll just play them today instead of leeds all right we are back we're going to go with given in goal fowler gerver and kowalski on the back line fowler making his debut i almost couldn't afford him i had to adjust the finances all the way uh into transfer budget and it let us squeeze it out um wheel Math mateus romain pascarello on the midfield we did have some guys tired in there uh we are going to put row on the bench and uh let's see who's the other guy oh Nag nagami's on the bench too so they'll be all right to play a little bit but they couldn't play the whole game uh gomez santos we're going to move up into that number 10 graves and cernan up top for us pascarello still looking for team fitness fowler making his debut as mentioned all right they are motivated Open them up with a spot of encouragement, of course. Arsenal with three early shots, but nothing on target. And we get the first highlight. It is headed out, and Alcides is out there on the counter. We do have three people back. Fowler and Pascarello are collapsing as well. And looks like they held things up just enough for the entire team to get back there. And oh my God, how did that happen? That was not good at all. I mean, the ball went completely over everybody back there. Pascarello came off of him. That was his man. Not a whole lot we can do there. 
and we find ourselves in a 1-0 hole. 17th minute, we're back in the highlight reel. Is it going to be us, or is it setting them up for something? Santos into wheel, and he puts it in at the back post. His first goal of the season, and Gomez Santos with the assist. And we do come right back and equalize. That makes me feel a whole lot better. <laughs> a whole lot better. All right, we're playing them tough. We've actually taken the lead on shots on target. So that bodes well. Graves. He takes a crack and then it goes out of play for a corner. Grayson could not maintain control of the ball. Leeds is now up 2 0. Mateus loses it, gets control again, plays it back out. Gomez Santos down to the touchline. And I tell you what, I think they've quit calling fouls in this game. <laughs> I really think so. Leeds is now up 3 0. 31st minute goal. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's encourage him again in the final minutes. It's going to be an Arsenal highlight. Head it out. Gomez Santos controls it with the touch. He does have runners in front of him. Graves. And it trickles into the goal. 24th of the season for Graves. Gomez Santos will get the assist. I don't know why that one particularly would be replayed, but we'll let him replay it at least next the next home game. Got very lucky on the goal. Two minutes of stoppage time. My concern is we've just come back to a straight kickoff highlight, and Arsenal is immediately on the attack. Fowler on his debut stabs at the ball and takes it away. Gets it up near midfield. And there's a ball up to Graves, and he dinks the keeper. But it's too high. He couldn't get the drop on the ball, or we would have been, had a 3-1 advantage. As it is, we have put 14 shots, 6 on target, and are now looking the better side. We are going to outstretch the arms. No, nope, we're going to pump the fist. Uh, they've given you credit. Try to keep them motivated. Uh, let's encourage them again. It's still only a one-goal game. So one of the things that I started doing in my other save uh, with this week's episodes is instead of just automatically, oh, what a finish by wheel. He's got two goals, and what a finish there. Banked it off the post, his second goal of the match. Uh, but instead of substituting right at 60 and 80 minutes, I'm kind of waiting for guys to uh, either be in foul trouble or for them to actually go red. Um, getting a little few more minutes out of each player, uh, each game, and you know, then potentially, you know, having to have those guys sit out a little bit if they have to, you know. I think we've got enough depth. A oh, big save by Gibbon puts it up into the stands. A sellout crowd, another 42,000 here at King, King Power Stadium. Excuse me, getting close to dinner time. I'm getting hungry. All right. Somebody mark him, please. Good tackle. Nobody cl closes on it. And Gibbon has a laser drawn on that. Ah, Sean, one of my uh, friends in real life <coughs> and a channel subscriber, starting to play some football manager today. Hope your team's doing well, Sean. There's a cross in. Mag Magoma makes the header, but it goes over. Um, let's, uh, let's praise him here. And then Romaine is now really tired. So let's go ahead and... Pull him off in the middle. And let's bring on uh, our other new player, Luke Rowe. All right, and we're going to go ahead and make the other sub there. Ascarello, wheel. Let's pull wheel off for Chasson. 
And I am going to wait a little while for that third sub. Even though Pascarello went red, uh, I want to make sure we don't have any injuries or, God forbid, a red card or whatever. All right, but we are starting to struggle back there. Okay, Pascarello is like really dragging. All right, let's go ahead and move him off for Mikaton. We'll do that. Fowler's just going to have to earn his money today. I mean, hell, he makes $800,000 a month. Suck it up, Buttercup. Play some football. Kowalski gets it turned up. Here's Mikaton getting onto the highlight reel. Can he pick out a pass? No, but he can crack a shot. At the near post, couldn't sneak it in. There's a header out. Mikaton is on it. He's off to the races again. Graves is trying to give him an outlet. It's there. I think Graves might have been off sides, but I don't think he followed through on that shot because I don't think he had any, uh, any thought that it was going to count. All right, we're going positive. There's not a whole lot we can do. 3-1, five minutes of stoppage time. Mikatin on the ball again. He takes a crack, forces Grayson into the save. Strong hands, puts it up into the stands. Gomez Santos lines up for the penalty. Nothing there. Graves tracks it down. Not really a guy I want to be dribbling the ball. He finds a cross. Nothing there. Fowler. Jogs over to it. I think he signaled to me while he was running towards me going, Hey, boss, boss. And I just kind of made the money sign at him and told him to go back to work. <laughs> All right. Mikaton with the one touch goes to Graves and he puts it in four to one. That should seal it up very nicely. Big win for us. Very big win. Well, we come back to a kickoff highlight. Oh my goodness. I'm always nervous with these. Ogoma. Into the box. Kowalski with the tackle away. That one's headed out. Nobody on it in the midfield. And Gibbon corrals that one in. A little too far for Valente to get a run onto it. He drives it out. Oh, my goodness. If that would have gotten over Tart Tartan's head, I think we could be looking at a 5-1 advantage. How did Magoma miss that one? Oh, he was off sides, but how did Magoma miss that one? <laughs> a strong 4-1 victory. 23 shots, 12 on target. I don't think it was looking like that uh, there in the early going. Good win. Very good win. We are certainly going to need a rest, but we do not have one with leads coming up just in a handful of days. Uh, everybody appears to be on 23 with just a couple of exceptions. Uh, we're now up to eight wins, 10 draws, five losses, 34 from 23. We have come such a long way. If we take a look at the stages, we are the number one team here in the second half so far. Three wins, one draw, and 10 points from four. Certainly cannot complain about that in the least. A historic 4-1 victory. What's historic about it? Three of their last five. Not sure. Fowler impresses on his debut. Graves, Stellar. Four key passes, two goals. Superb in front of the goal. Oh, uh, 10 unbeaten without a loss. That's actually pretty strong. And Gomez Santos with a nice result there. We will come back. I'd like to come right back for leads, but I don't think we can do that. Um, again, I do record in bulk. So the question I asked you guys last episode, I have not seen because that video has not even gone up yet. Uh, so this one and the next episode will be recorded already uh, before you even see that video uh, coming up a week 
a week from now, maybe eight days from now. So, um, but still comment on it and let me know because I will take that under advisement. Uh, but I'm going to kind of jump ahead. I don't know when the, the, the next round of the FA Cup is. Uh, also, we have, uh, so I think we're, we'll play leads off camera, and then I will decide at some point where to come back. Uh, it'll probably be for wherever that next FA Cup, if it's the fifth round or the quarterfinals or whatever it is, we'll come back somewhere in that area, wherever it is. And we'll probably do that match, and then we'll jump to the season finale for what I'm recording right now. And then we'll see what you guys have to say. And so next season, we can always come back and do a few more episodes if this ends up progressing quicker than you guys like it. Remember to hit the like button. I just can't, uh, can't ask you to do that enough. Uh, I do limit it to twice a video. That's the way you support the channel and help get more eyes on my videos, which is which is my goal. Uh, we've been doing really good uh, with the number of 10 or 15 views per episode. Uh, the most recent ones are lagging a little bit, but I think for the most part, people are uh, getting into it. Uh, so I'm recording this on Saturday. Friday's episode is at 10. Thursday's episode is at 10. The episode that went up today has been out for about nine hours. We only have three views, which is a little behind. But again, I, you know, the weekends I find lag a little bit, probably because people are doing more. And that's fine. As long as you, you can check it out later, uh, I certainly do appreciate you even making the time uh, and, and making the effort. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye.